I now call to order the new Carlisle City Council meeting, January 7, 2019, at 7 p.m. Mrs. Berner. Mayor Reynolds. Here. Mr. Shammy. Here. Mr. Lowry. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Five members present. All right, thank you. If you all don't mind standing for the invocation tonight. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for allowing us to gather here in the freest country in the world, Lord, to express our liberties and our thoughts and our concerns with our community, Lord. Bless our city as we continue to go forward and our firefighter and EMS, and Lord, let the weather get some get nice and let the wind slow down. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. I pledge the flag back. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Do we have action on the minutes for 12-17-18? Make the motion to accept the minutes on 12-17-18. Second. 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 Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. It's accepted 5 0. Okay. Going on. Uh, communications are none tonight. Mr. Kick. Thank you, Mayor Reynolds. Good evening, uh, Council, members of the public. Uh, tonight I um, uh, was asked to fill in for Randy. He is out ill this evening, so hopefully he gets better. Um, we're going to jump right down to F informational items under income tax collection reports. Uh, the 2017 and 2018 are attached in your packets. Um, I'm, shows that he was going to have some comments, uh, but so I'm guessing that if, unless you guys have some questions about that, I'm sure he'll probably put those out at the second meeting of the month. Uh, the next item is motion to approve members to some various boards. Um, do you want me to read down, and, or we just go ahead and do the motions for each individual? Yeah, if you want to go through, read down, if you don't mind. Um, a couple we have is uh, Paul Mala Jr. for Tax Review Board, Steve Fields for the Planning Board, Janet Adio for the Board of Zoning Appeals, also <coughs> known as the BZA, Karen Clark for the Planning Board, Sharon High for the Board of Zoning Appeals, BZA, and Sally Rotiri for the Planning Board. Council? Mr. Mayor, I'll yes. make a motion to accept these both. Second. Any comments? No. All right, Mrs. Burr. Okay. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Motion accepted 5 0. And moving on down, or thank you for that. Uh, moving on down, we have various board openings. Uh, we have an opening for the Parks and Recreation Board. We have one. For the Board of Zoning Appeals, uh, we have one opening. And Tax Review Board, we have two openings. So I'm guessing, without having any understanding, that uh, with these openings, they're probably accepting or have maybe put out some information. I'm not sure if he has to request uh, to get these ones filled or not. So I will have to get with Mr. Bridge and see where we go about that. So if there's anybody out there, I'm sure uh, we'll be looking for someone to fill these openings. Uh, 2019 council information attached will be your pay dates, uh, the meeting dates for 2019, and the observed holidays. And then upcoming is the town hall meeting and the 2019 operating budget work sessions. Uh, year closeout anticipated by the end of the month of January. Work sessions to begin the second week in February and uh, to set dates. So. My guess is we'll probably at the next meeting set some dates to get our work sessions planned. And that is all I have for the city manager report. I can entertain any questions and get them to Mr. Bridge or anything for myself or anything else involving the city. Mr. Cook, you have something? On the council meeting dates, the meeting for 9-3-19 is set for a Monday. That should be a Tuesday. Memorial Day or Labor Day, sorry. I think that that Monday is a um, holiday. Is is nine three actual holiday? It's not just a misprint for Monday Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, the second is a Monday. Mm -hmm. Here are the two. So nine three nineteen would actually be the Tuesday. Well, nine two nine two is a Monday, which okay. is your Labor Day. So just so it, nine three should be a Tuesday. Okay, so we have the date correct, just date's not the the uh, day of the week. Okay. So then that one be will be changed to nine or er, nine three nineteen stays the same. We'll just change from Monday to Tuesday. Right. right. Any did anybody uh, see anything else? No. Any other questions for Howie? No. no. You got that? No, I'm good. Okay. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Moving on from city manager reports, comments from members from the public. Please limit comments to five minutes or less and state, state your name and address. <coughs> Linda Eggleston, Nowakowski, 317 South Main Street. I have two separate topics. One, I wanted to give you a report on the garden. Um, we are moving forward to set up beehives on the garden plot uh, at Westlake. Um, and we have <clears throat> just been notified that we received a $15,000 grant towards purchasing a tractor uh, that will have mowing bed and tiller and a scoop uh, that we'll be able to use on that nine acres. But I thought you would like to, like to know how we're proceeding there. Secondly, I have some questions about clarifications. Um, the charter indicates that the council is to define a designated newspaper of general uh, distribution in town. And as far as I know, since the New Carlisle News closed, that has not been designated. I would just like to know how and when that will be done. That would be something I would imagine Randy would have to work with with our legal counsel to figure out exactly what the terms would mean. I know that Randy had already spoke with Lynette about this temporarily, like uh, about two or three weeks ago, when it, or not really, I guess two weeks ago when it was announced, so about what general circulation is, correct? Uh, it's about what, like what <coughs> constitutes a general circulation, if it's like in a Correct. Um, we, we haven't been instructed to look into it just yet, um, at least as far as I'm concerned. Um, I can go back to the office and, and ask uh, and get an answer back to you, uh, or to council, and, and work with Mr. Bridge on that. Uh, it's my understanding it needs to be a physical newspaper if one is available. Um, but again, I will look into it. Uh, I mean, with with the number of announcements that we have coming up, it seems pretty important to me that the people in the city know where they Thank you, Ms. <coughs> um, I wondered if anybody here could tell me what the, how many people voted in the last gubernatorial election. Since that determines numbers of names on petitions. No, I do, cannot. Okay. That's something the Board of Elections can probably tell you. Um, as I understand it from uh, the distributed papers, um, you are going to require 50 signatures. I wondered how that number was determined. I had the same question myself, and I actually called Randy on it. And Ms. <coughs> would you like to explain that? Sure. Because yeah, you I gave me the, it, she, Lynette gave me the legal, well, Randy, the legal explanation, which he recited back to me. So. Sure. Um, the reasoning behind the 50 signatures, or petitions, rather, um, in the city charter, when the council cannot fill a vacancy pursuant to the charter, the charter directs the procedure to the Ohio Election Code. We have a legal opinion from the Clark County Board of Elections that the election code is Title 35 of the Ohio, Ohio Revised Code. In ORC 35, I believe, 
point or 3513, um, the number of petitions is 50 required. Then I would like to know why when I called the Board of Elections today and asked how many would be required, they said a minimum of 25, a maximum of 50. I can't answer that question. All I know is from <coughs> um, the legal opinions that we have been given that we sought out in, in our own research, um, we have determined <coughs> 50 petitions is uh, the, the amount needed. I mean, the, my concern here is that without having the New Carlisle local paper, I don't know that anything close to a half of the people even get a newspaper at all anymore. <laughs> and how would people know that? And if they call the Board of Elections and they submit 25 signatures on the last day, thinking that they're doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing, then get thrown out, I think we've got problems on our hands there. So something needs to be done in terms of communication and knowing that information. Well, the board hasn't gotten our resolution yet, which certifies it as 50. And they're just going off of what a regular election would be, that would be my presumption, uh, but I will make sure to follow up with Mr. Baker. Uh, Mr. Cobb. When I ran, we had, according to the Board of Elections, which the applicant or the registration they may give us was 75. Maximum. A maximum. That was a maximum of 75. You could go with 25, but it's better to go on to the 75 well, than if you went over but if 70. I, I mean, if I happen to know that I've got 25 good signatures, I'm, <laughs> you know, coming up with another 50, you know. Mike and I actually went through this in 2011 where we had a member of council. We filed ours and then we were told, oh, uh, you need 50. So Mike and I went back and had to go get 25 more signatures mm -hmm. so that we could be certified onto the ballot. Uh, because someone said that you need 50 even though our charters are 25 and the board wasn't very clear. So this has happened not once, just not currently, but it's happened in the past as well. But I think that's something that I, hopefully this resolution will clear up. So, Council, anything else on the topic? Mr. Cook, I know you had some concerns. Well, I spoke with Jason at the Board of Elections today and I think that is where the confusion is. Once this resolution is passed and according to the Secretary of State, got to be the 50 due to the fact that we're outside of that framework of the charter. We're now into the Ohio Revised Code. They then probably will tell you 50 if you get the right people. Now also, for another info uh, type of a situation, the Board of Elections is going to be going to a conference tomorrow morning until the following Monday, which will be closed because of a holiday. If we pass this tonight, there is a great probability that there will not be any chance of picking up any petitions from the Board of Elections until a week from Tuesday. However, you can go online and you can print the form off at the Ohio Secretary of State's website. It needs right. to be front and back. And the problem is the communication. And that's what we're trying to well, clear up because... It's not like we're trying to... We've to cloak and dagger it, the, the purpose is, is we, just, we passed this, we, Mike made the motion November 5th at the meeting to have this written to be before us. It just got to us today. And Mr. Cook sprung it on us <laughs> right before the meeting started that there were some concerns. And I had the same concerns with the 50 signatures and I reached out to Randy Friday and they told me what exactly what Mr. Heck had said. And the actually the election code, just because I read into it, is uh, if you want to write it down, Linda, it's 3513.251. And that states that if you're a municipality over 5,000 and you're not governed in a charter, then you have to get 50 signatures. And if you're a charter, then it, you kick to the charter. Because we didn't fill the vacancy within the certain time, it picked the state election code. It's not communication. It's the Board of Elections hasn't gotten this yet, so they're just going off of former things. Well, th that's, we have, we just found out to Friday when we got our packets, and so now it's being established today. And 
I, I can understand her concern. The biggest problem we're going to have here is the fact that without a newspaper of general concern, unless the Dayton Daily News and the Springfield News Sun pick this up, the people are not going to know what their legitimate reasons are if they go in there with 25 signatures and put those in, they're probably going to be thrown out of the possibility of being elected. I would agree, but candidates, the Board of Election actually clearly states when you announce your candidacy that you need to read the candidate's guide. I mean, and so that's up to every individual person. Mike had to read it, I've had to read it, you've had to read it. No, right. not the first time. When we ran, it was simple. They said us, they told us what we need to do once they found out. And they'll do the same to all the other candidates. Council, anything else? So, I'm sorry, Mr. Yes. Chair. So, the charter doesn't overrule the state's rule. That's, where, that's the way that's, I... That's the way... Section 4.08 of the state charter. I mean, that's that 4.08 4. 4. says, any case where a vacancy cannot be filled, filled under the provisions of this charter, the election code of the state of Ohio shall apply. Okay. The charter is the point that it happened if moved to the mayor. There was no appointment made. The vacancy was not filled pursuant to the charter. Therefore, following the charter, the ORC, the Ohio Ohio Revised Code, shall means it must apply. Okay. So, I mean, what's the worst? I mean, you. I mean, I, would, I mean. I don't think there is usually when it's, it's a vote of the resolution that sends it to them, and they'll know what to do. And I mean, this is it's prompted by our legal counsel to write it. The Board of Elections approved it. I mean, they sent us what we needed. So. But even if the minimum is, you know, is. 25 or 50, which I mean, you still need to know that number. But I mean, you always get more anyway because of the signature may not match up and they don't like it or whatever it may be, or someone thought they were made a move. Yeah, yeah. move. I mean, so you always get that buffer anyway. But yeah, um, I, I'm right there with you. Yeah. So, in this minute, if I yes, may, go ahead. Uh, for the record, the the petition form is called Board of Election Petition Form Number Three O. Title nominating statement of candidacy for nonpartisan office, municipal office. Yeah, and the board will give you a uh, mock petition how it should be filled out because they'll have to have like certain dates prescribed within their petition. This is ask you. Yes, I do. I, I, over the last year, I've been concerned with the number of problems we've had that somehow revolved around members of council not understanding the charter. Um, we had a case where we had a member of council who directed a city employee to do something in violation of the charter. And the charter reads that if someone has done they are removed from office, period. That didn't happen. Then we had hearings that had been called for for two members of council. And we had one person on council who said, I will not vote against these men. And he didn't bother to read the charter to say that it's not whether you support them, it's whether they committed the violations. And they both stood in front of this room and said they had done what they had been accused of doing. And because at that point, we couldn't get a majority that was required to be able to remove anybody, the hearings were with, withdrawn and the charges were withdrawn. It seems to me that if you're going to be a <coughs> city council, you need to read the rules that govern what you're supposed to be doing and how you do it. 
Thank you. Council, anything else? Comments from members of the public? No. Yes, Thanks. Mr. Lowry, sorry. Mr. Uh, Linda, I just wanted to go back to your first uh, topic on the, uh, in the garden. I was just curious, me and April were walking through the school the other day. Are, is the garden only going to take the, the front half that's closest to Walsh, or is it going to be, will you guys have control over the whole field? We have the whole field. Okay. So the, more the front. What, more in the middle of it. Okay. Um, because the school is not going to be, where the building was, it's not going to be useful for the garden at all. Okay. Which is what we'd like to eventually do. And that also puts us close to the building. Thank you. Any other comments from members of the public? Hearing none. Mrs. Berner. Resolution this evening. Intro and action. Resolution 19-01R. Introduction, public hearing and action tonight. A resolution revising the New Carlisle City Council Rules of Council. Council? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lauer. Make a motion to adopt resolution 19-01-R. there a second? Mr. Shannon. Mr. Kitka, do you want to explain or do you want me to? Um, go ahead, Mayor. <laughs> All right, uh, this is just a, a yearly uh, ordinance that we adopt it, or resolution rather, that we adopt that sets our how our meetings should be run, adjourn, and Talking limits and everything else. Uh, just uh, we've had most of these for the longest time. I, we've only changed it once, I think, in the last like 10 years. And it was just minuscule changes, like little time slots here. So, uh, but I knew Mr. Cook had something to say because he talked to me about it previously. Mr. Yes, Cook? in section three under the agenda, item C. Copy of all ordinances or resolutions must be available to all council members, etc. I would like to see inserted in that copy of all ordinances, resolutions, and contracts. And the reason for this, if we come forth with either an ordinance or a resolution that references a contract, and we have not read that contract. I think we're not being very diligent in voting upon same. And I refer this to the Affordable Care Act. Is that a motion to amend then? Yes, I'll make a motion to amend that section. Mr. Heck, that would be a proper motion, correct? Because it's resolution and requires only one read? Right, so we might withdraw the motion did you make a motion to adopt? I did. Might have withdraw that in motion to table. To table this completely? Well, well maybe. Because yeah. I, I tabled and changed. And I don't table think. and discuss the change. And then that it, with, with the change made, then you can adopt it. At the pro next meeting. Right. Is that, is that a, on discussion on the amendment motion? Is that okay with you, Mr. Lowry? Or? Can, can you, if you don't mind, Bill, Mr. Mayor, may Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Um, can you go over it one more time? I just want to make sure I understand what you're saying. All I want to do is insert in that section C where it's got a copy of all ordinances, resolutions, add the word contracts. <coughs> That's on page two of that. Okay. Can you say it's section under the agenda? So. Yeah, it's uh, agenda C, a copy of all ordinances or resolutions. You want to put ordinances, resolutions, and contracts? Correct. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Contracts automatically come before us. Okay. Anyhow, correct? It's council's jurisdiction is over the city manager's uh, contracting authority. So yeah. Anything below that monitor threshold is solely the city manager's jurisdiction. Contract. 
reduce the problem by saying that these small contracts will go into firm now. So will you make an amendment that a copy of all ordinances, uh, resolutions, and contracts above 25,000? No, he's, he's, I, I see. I see what he's saying. Is I, I understand what he's saying. My concern is if we're passing an ordinance or a resolution in reference to a contract, we should be able to read that contract before we vote upon that you just ordinance want the, or that. He resolution. just wants the information. Okay. So in that case, because the ordinance is going to be in the first place, well, the, re the reason I'm saying this, last meeting we had a contract that we voted on an ordinance, if I remember right, and the contract was not attached. Mr. Lindsay made a motion or asked about the insurance contract, of which it was, and he was told that if we had to pass it before we could find out what was in it. I think the purpose of subsection C, section three, subsection C, is regarding council's either adoption or passage of the ordinance program. And by adding in their contract, just for the purpose of <coughs> reviewing the contract, it doesn't fit the purpose of that subsection. Following? So I'm not sure if adding contracts into that section uh, is the proper way to do it. Now, you have one Discuss the way that all contracts that you uh, pass or adopt a warrant resolution have to be attached. You can discuss that. I think that'd be the proper way. By uh, mm, sorry, by its own standing legislation. Could be. I'm not familiar with each subsection of the rules. I apologize. That's I'm right. Sure there's one that fits better or not, but I think this is worth the discussion. Mr. Lowry. This is, I think we went over this before, haven't we? I met with, with uh, maybe a year or so ago. Yeah. I, and I can't remember the, the, what the outcome was, the discussion. Should we just table it until he's back and better and we can all maybe go over it, whether it's phone call or discuss it at the next meeting? Is that okay with you, Mr. Cook? That's fine. I mean, better to you know, make sure we get it right before we, you know. So you want to withdraw your last name, Mr. Cook? And Mr. Yeah. Lowry can motion the table. Whose motion was it? To amend. Mr. Lowry. I make a motion to withdraw my motion. There you go. It's withdrawn. Now do you want to make a motion to table it? I will make a motion to table. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on the tabling? Nope. Mrs. Burner. All right. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Shane. Yes. Now it's for you to do ordinance. Okay. We don't have to do the. He withdrew his motion. Yeah, we're, okay, we're. okay. Okay. Ordinance 19-02R, Introduction, Public Hearing and Action Tonight, a resolution directing the Clark County Board of Elections to include in the special election being held on May 7th, 2019, an election to fill, fill the vacant seat on the City of New Carlisle City Council for the duration of its expired unexpired term. Council. Make a motion. Mr. Cobb. He's got something to say. I, I've got, again, some things that we need to. Before we get to that, we can't discuss it without a motion okay. in a second. Excuse me. So, Mr. Cobb, uh, you want to make your motion? I make a motion we accept 19 0 2 R. I'll second it. Pardon? I'm seconding it. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Oh, you're going to give it to me. Thank you, Mr. Kitko. Uh, this is our. Resolution to set the election date and to have it be before uh, the vacant seat that has been vacant for some time now to be before the citizens of New Carlisle. Mr. Cook, you said you had something. Okay. 
In regards to a couple of things, I believe we've now got the signatures and we've got the 60, 90 days situation taken care of. However, down toward the bottom, it states a special election to be held in the usual voting places within the city of New Carlisle on the 7th day of May, 2019. We do not have any voting places within the city of New Carlisle. That is true. However, so I was saying. We, we have got an email right before council started. Mike pointed out, and actually Mr. Shammy pointed it out to me, that has are updated to put within the amendment uh, within the postal zip code of New Carlisle, Ohio. That's how it should read. So if there's a Go ahead, sorry. I think there was another email after that one. Oh, there's another email after that one? And it, a polling place as established by the Clark County Board of Elections. <laughs> Mr. Heck, would, are you pulling that up? Yes, I am, okay. Mr. Mayor. This was all, a lot of these things were brought up on Friday. We had, thought we had a resolve, and then Mr. Cook found this one to, right before the meeting. Does anybody have an actual copy of the Mr. most Shavis recent, or is it email only? It's email only. He literally yeah. sent it to us at 649. 649. Okay. That's the same one I have, too. Okay. Looking in the first paragraph after, be it resolved. After the first paragraph? That should be, that's okay, the way it says. Okay. Um, considering that the physical polling place is not within the city, we are saying that the polling place will be established by the Clark County Board of Elections. Okay. That's fine. That's good? That's good. So we'll need a motion to amend that, correct? To amend our... Right. We can just write that in. Motion to amend it, you can write it in. Okay. That'd be fine. Is there a motion to amend? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Then we need to vote on that amendment. Is there any discussion on the amendment? Burner. Okay. So we Mr. Lowry. Mr. First. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Cobb. What are we moving to now? This is to amend it amend to section. take out the section about. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. And accepted five zero. Uh, any discussion on the now amended resolution? We also got another section here. Mr. Cook. <laughs> Item three. <laughs> Clark County Board of Elections is directed to include for the purpose of seeking voter approval in the special election in the city of New Carlisle. I want to take out the word in and put for, F-O-R. Mr. Heck. Again, given the same considerations that the election is not in the actual city limits, uh, I believe amending N to four should be okay. Okay. Is that your motion? So moved. Is there a second on that motion? Second. Any discussion on the motion? Mrs. Berner. Lowry was the second? Yep, it'll be Mr. Cobb first. All right, Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Dramatic pause. Accepted <laughs> 5 0. On the second amendment, are there any comments, questions, or concerns on the, amend on the amended resolution? 
Hearing none, Miss, you have something, Mr. Cobb? No. Okay, you look at me, I was like, oh, here we go. All right, Mrs. Berner. All right, back to the original. So Mr. Cook was the second for that, correct? Yep. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Shami. Yes. Mr. Lau. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Accepted by zero. Moving on, ordinances this evening, we have none. Other business, Congressman Warren Davidson will hold mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. until 2 p.m. Um, executive session this evening, none. All right, council, is there anything for other business? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to excuse Vice Mayor Lindsay. Is there a second? Second. Second. And the explanation is Mr. Lindsay has had knee operation again. He had fallen and needed to get his knee replaced. Well, not completely replaced, apparently. Just needed some meshing in there done up. So okay. he should be back, hopefully, uh, and sometime soon. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Shannon? Yes. Accepted 5 0. Mr. Lowry, do you have some further business? I do, please. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I just wanted to thank everyone for coming out for the New Year's Eve ball drop, for those of you that are here that did come out. Uh, it was a little windy, and luckily the rain stopped before it, it uh, was time to start the show. Uh, kind of a bummer we didn't get to do fireworks because the wind was so heavy that night. Uh, but with that being said, you know, we had to set a rain date for the fireworks, and there's really no good rain date for New Year's Eve. So <laughs> you can only really do that one once. So luckily the fireworks uh, company uh, let us move that rain date to October. So for the festival this year, which kind of works out, it'll be our 15th year, uh, we'll have fireworks for the festival. And then Bobo Construction, from what I understand, has made the commitment to sponsor the fireworks for next year's um, 10th ball. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, 10th ball drop. So, and then hopefully the city will uh, put fireworks in its budget if, if we can. So that'll mean three sets of fireworks for New Carlisle this year. So should be a good time. So. Fantastic. That's all I have. Council, anything you. else? Nope. Mr. Lowry. I move we adjourn. Sir. Mr. Shammy seconded. We are adjourned.